your finalists from last split with a new face with the likes of both Ray's Incursio and Foreigner joining the roster and in Direwolves also with newcomers joining the team, rookies amongst them, showcasing we've made it to the pro level. Let's see what we can do up against one of the heavy hitters in the league. Level one, let's see if any shenanigans take place like last time. Yeah, Ray's, like, in, like, memory to me has always been the level one guy. Like, I've been on many different teams with him, and he's just always been the guy who cooks up, like, something crazy level one. So I think if there is any level ones in the region, it will definitely come from Antic. It certainly would do. And I think it was an interesting point that Draku raised, right, in terms of, uh, like, prestige in the region. Both Ray's and Babbitt, former teammates as well, right? Teammates that you've shared with, uh, mm -hmm. with six titles to the name. They're tied as the most successful player ever in Oceanic history. Schoenfire not too far behind, as is Biopanther tied at five. They're still active in this league. So uh, there's definitely a bit of pride on the line to say, I want to try and be outright the best player, the most achieved player, celebrated one, to uh, play down under. Yeah, definitely having seven tiles to your name would be a bit crazy. I'm curious to see how this bowling does play out though. I feel like uh, Diwals should be like pretty happy with how the 2v2 works. I don't think like there's an insane amount of damage coming out of the Varus in early game. And I think that like the items that Aphelios has access to is just like way stronger than, you know, like an on-hit Varus. I assume he's going to go lethality because he wants to have access to like poke. He doesn't really want to be playing a front-to-back kind of style. Yeah, if you can outrange, as you've mentioned uh, a few times, then uh, that is your strength, right? And obviously, a lethality version of Varus snowballs very, very hard. So, let's see how they pilot this one in the bot lane. As for Katsuri, being the star of the show, the team leader, the one to try and get the resources funneled into him, will he be able to hit the promised land of getting those two items online and giving us those, uh, you know, on-release of Felios uh, flashbacks? You know what? I didn't actually notice it, but we have Mayfan playing top lane and, Mo and Mochi playing jungle. It got flipped around at the last second, yeah. So okay. everything's changed in the heat of the moment. And um, that does throw a bit of a spanner in the works, right? Because that's another role swap. Yeah, like Mayfan to me was always like the, he's the Graves guy. He's the, uh, he's that like kindred, like the high tempo jungler. But we, we don't know much about Mochi. Like he's a new prospect. Like uh, excited to see like what he's able to do, especially on a pick as strong as uh, a powerful pick like Lee Sin. Certainly is, yeah. It's a very interesting discussion. Maybe when we get a chance to interview him, we can ask uh, why that switch has come around. And with the Viego buffs, perhaps there's a chance for him to try and play his uh, most played competitive champion now in a laning capacity. As it stands, though, he gets to endure uh, a very annoying matchup, right? Cassante, obviously insanely strong, does receive a nice little buff on this patch, which I'm sure to many people are confused, but he's into the Twisted Fate, which makes that matchup feel really bad. Yeah, he's doing he's doing pretty good to like uh, get the CS under his tower there. It's a it's a bit of like a, you have to take it in early game. There's not much you can really do until you get access to like the tabbies and a bit of armor, and then like you can play to ignore the TF. Maybe you find the Q3 and get a solo kill, but it's it's just honestly a lane that you survive in. I'm surprised that they didn't go for a lane swap if that wasn't nerfed recently, because I think that is next patch. We didn't see anything in 14.10, so it would uh, celebrate the fact that it is still viable, it is still possible, but whether or not the team feels uh, strong enough to communicate and then operate it is another question entirely. As Farona pops his head into top lane and says, you're not the jungler anymore, buddy. Enjoy the life of a laner that gets ganked on cooldown. He goes in for the hit. He flashes out immediately, drops down to 40%. Zonis also cops the turret shot as well. And Mayfan says, well, dive me again. My jungler is in the bot lane. I've got no protection, but my tower is my best friend. Well, Mayfan didn't decide to W either of the gold card or the Vi-Q, but he's still able to just outplay the die completely. Like, Hulk still has his flash, still has his cookie that he's consuming now. Like, he's, he's happy with how that turned out. He is happy with how that one turned out. So he's, uh, whether the initial storm, also we know that Zoranis is a very proficient Twisted Fate. Saw it countless times throughout the LCO playoffs. Always looking to try and push, uh, push the lead as much as he can. He even played Varus top, right? So isn't afraid to do weird and wacky things. If there was ever a world in which that Varus first pick was a top lane flex, for instance. Oh. But Guapi is going to uh, poke his head out of lane for just a second. All tracked by Vision, unfortunately for him. You can see the entirety of top lane lit up like a beautiful Christmas tree. Yeah, he just decides to TP back and use his priority to, like, you know, relieve a bit of pressure pressure for his top laner. Like, not, they're not really going to find anything against, like, double stumps, twisted fade. Like, he's kind of an ungankable champion when he has the ghost up. But it's still nice that, like, he's uh, assisting his top laner a bit there. <laughs> See if anything were to take place in the spot lane now. Both junglers are here in the area. Mochi about to reveal himself on vision. So, Foreigner has all the tools, all the ability to uh, coordinate their response. Just hanging out with Fog of War will be uh, Guapi as well on the rotate. Looking to try and force a 
five minute four man collapse, but uh, ultimately it's just waste of time. And I mean, the vision just proves to be the defining factor. Yeah, good to see Foreigner was here to cover. We, we, we keep seeing this though, like Wappy's finding these windows to roam off like mid priority and like eventually he's going to find the uh, the window to be able to snowball his side lanes and like this is so important when versing something like a like a Huey, like a Cinder and Orianna, like just may just just stuck in lane because they can't really match your map movement your, and your wave clear. So we have to see if Guapi is able to link up with Mochi and like find an early kill. Yeah, also as the game goes uh, later and later on, the ability to then try and uh, travel across the map will be a big, big deal. But here we go. Mayfun getting aggressive, looking for the solo balloon to Zoran is flushing at the very last second. And the gold card, having burnt the W already, wasn't within tower range to try and answer back. But uh, look, that is Zoran is pushing it to the limit. Yeah, so like, this is really scary now for Zoran. It's like he's lost double summoners. It's it's very hard to navigate like the Cassante, especially like Lee Sin, Talia ult. Like I expect to see him die in the next five minutes. We'll have to see if he's able to, uh, you know, navigate that. As we do want to see if Antic want to contest the Grubs here. Twisted Fate is at base, but he does pop the ult. So he does get some vision in the sky, re uh, revealing to the rest of his team where Dire will start. But that alone is enough to say we'll back away from this one. They picked up one Void Grub on this occasion, and they'll be forced to sacrifice the rest. So not the worst. But as you mentioned, Guapi now being level six is going to be definitely keen to try and find an angle, if not in the mid lane, elsewhere to try and blow open this game for them. Yeah, he does have access to the tier two boots, so he's not even he's not even worried about like trading in lane or like playing to scale. He just wants to move around the map as much as possible. It's one of like most important things for mid laners is like getting early tier two boots because like movement speed equates to damage for a lot of champions in mid lane. Like being able to dodge spells, being able to land spells is so important when you have an insane amount of damage. Oh, dangerous moment here for Guapi as uh, Dragku is just teasing with the ability to try and knock him up, but actually in the end gets flipped back instead. They will reveal themselves having started up the second objective. So with the priority to go for the first uh, on those Void Grubs, they instantly try and say, well, our bot lane is found a window, a pocket of time in which we can start up the second. And uh, the Drake does reset and to just being in the area enough to try and fault their attempts. So it might just play ping pong. Maybe Antic then decide our time as they force Diwals back. Yeah, Antic managed to stop the dragon with three people while Raze was pushing the bot lane there, and they've crashed the wave and now have like control back of river. So it's completely up to them what they want to do. Like they can uh, play for camps, they can start the dragon themselves, they can play for a gank. It's just being able to have uh, you know more options is just always good. Wrapping around, looking for that grand entrance onto Katsuru, who's holding his own for the meantime with the sniper Calibrim active and ready. Able to make sure that he can last it if he is getting completely zoned. Fantastic flash out of that chain of corruptions as Ray spots an opportunity to get a solo kill. And to abuse the fact that Shinki is only now running back from base to lane. Not to be the yeah. case here today though, no first blood. Yeah, they definitely noticed that Shinki's not here and Katsuri's uh, he's playing a bit a bit too aggressive and he loses his flash, which is uh, such a big deal because that's a five minute cooldown versus, you know, a short cooldown on the ult or like a flash engage from a car. Like, Draku just does ding six here, so we have Foreigner coming, but he's gonna walk over the woods unfortunately, so I don't think much will happen, but it's still hard for Katsuri to navigate without flash now against such hard engage. Yeah, it certainly is, as you say. Uh, Foreigner is going to come in with that sweep. Only going to be able to clear one ward on this occasion. Draku going to clear at least their control ward, but then says, you know what, Guapi, you're on a rotate. I'm going to go for the flash quickness. You can go in for that least set attempt, but it's just not going to happen. The ignite, it's burning. Guapi surviving. Shinky wrapping around. And Ray's keen on the hunt. The unending despair is there, but it's not lethal. G she actually flashes into his team. He CCs them all. There's the first spot. There's the double. And the Foreigner heal. gets a double, and he survives. Yeah, I thought Antic had overextended a bit too much. They blew way too many cooldowns onto Guapi there, and he was able to flash to safety. Mochi had a really good kick to disengage the Vi there, but like, they just had way too much damage coming out of nowhere. Like the Varus Qs, the the Hui the, the QW, like there's just so much damage coming out of nowhere, and they're able to find the first blood. All I'm saying there, Tally, is aren't you glad that was a whale and not like a, um, a different one, like a center route, for example? There's nothing worse than somebody flashing with that and just rooting the entire team. You're like, bro, are you playing for the other team? <laughs> we'll have to wait and see as Mochi is now poking his head into top lane. Sidestep from Zoranus. No summoners, as we mentioned. Ghost just about to come up. Doesn't seem to be even required as he turns it around and says, gank me again. I'll make it a 1v2. Yeah, Lee Sin doesn't really have the access to the ult here, and Zoranus knows that, so he's playing very aggressive even though he doesn't have the flash. As far as does find Guapi. He's looking for Guapi and Kursu, sniping him away as the rest of his team just stay on top of him, so there's no escaping this one. 
thrown it, feeling inspired by this. He's going to plant some aggressive vision. He's going to go and play for the enemy red. And I don't know if Mochi is actually keen to entertain this. Yeah, I mean, Lee Sin's happy with the 1v1, but like, he just has no teammates on the map right now. Foreigner's just going to take away his red really comfortably. So it's a nice, sizable camp lead for him. He's, he's going to have like a really easy job, you know, being that like solo frontline for Antic because he's so fed. Well, it's a rare opportunity then for Katsuri to be left to his own devices and farm a few of these turret plates, which certainly looks good for him. He's able to then keep pace with uh, Raze on the Varus. A nice little opportunity with the Chakrams there for them to push out their wave and then have a second crack at uh, taking this Cloud Drake. Yeah, Daiwals do have priority in the bullion right now. They know Farron is still top side, so like it should be just an easy trade. I think both teams are happy with this trade. Like, it's kind of a it's like a nothing handshake. It's not really gonna like matter in the long run of things, but you know, it's it's good to see that like we're still seeing like trading even though Daiwals are losing a bit of control on the map. And they are losing a bit of control, but as you say, the trade is uh, at least a merit worthy one. Gopi consistently, every single time we pan to him, he's not a mid lane. He is roaming. He is keen to find that one angle. Without any summoners available, it could be a bit of a dicey game. But still, as you say, has the Weaver's Wall up and uh, can let's try and block off a key objective when it does decide to spawn. But nothing at this stage, given that they've just taken that dragon. And bot lane is going to wait for its moment. It's that drag who does jump in, but the grand entrance, not going to connect. Yeah, we do see Foreigner piling in bot, and we do have all also up on Antic side, so we'll have to see if like he goes for like a lane gank or something, if they want to punish Katsuru not having flash. Also, I want to like shout out Incursio. I think he's doing pretty good so far, like, as ult does go out. Chain of Corruption today, but the Breath of Life instantly nullifies it, right? That basically allows you to have that free cleanse in lane, so a trading of ultimate cooldowns. But as you say, as we get a chance to pan to mid lane, yeah, Incursio not able to leave lane, but uh, if he's an assassin main, he's getting it done. Yeah, when I like when I think of Incursio, I'm thinking like, oh, he's playing Katarina, he's got like three CS per minute, he's roaming around the map 20 and zero. <laughs> and it's really strange to me to see like almost 10 CS per minute on Incursio. It's like very foreign. But I think he's doing a good job, even though he's like probably laning <laughs> against like no one because Celia's just auto shoving every wave and just running around the map. And he's like, guys, be careful. She's roaming again. She is. Well, that's essentially it. And it's, it's worked out so well that he's actually been able to get back to base and pick up that Blackfire torch. So the uh, ability now to basically say all of us have a completed item over our opponents. We're up by close to uh, nearly 4,000 golds. Uh, we can really do as we like. We can keep the tempo as it is and sit in lane and just win in those isolated matchups. Or if they keep entertaining the ideas of these objective fights, we'll just walk in, retake, and take it for ourselves. Yeah, the nice thing about Blackfire Torch is uh, since we lost Dematerializer, like a lot of mages lost like their ability to one shot waves because you don't have that extra bit of uh, percentage damage on the creeps. But like, Blackfire Torch allows way to like QEE, -E -E, like the normal wave clear combo, and like one shot the melee creeps, which is like really nice for like that extra bit of speed, like the quality of life, like moving around the map faster because you spend less time clearing waves. It's a it's very nice like quality of life change. Let's see how much quality he can then uh, output with it as a result. All that burning damage certainly going to be a bit of a menace, especially when he does uh, Zeref Tech and just hits you off screen. But uh, you did just see in the bot lane both tier 2 boots completed there. So boots of lucidity for the two of them, as to be expected, is that Lethality Varus is wanting to try and keep his distance. And really say, okay, if you're looking for that engage as a Lee Sin or Cassante, it's just not going to happen. Speaking of, he is top lane. And those uh, lane states have flipped despite the towers not being down. The turret plates are gone, which makes the lane flip a little bit better, given that the objective has just spawned. Yeah, Daiwals initiate a swap. I assume they are uh, either trying to avoid the uh, like the top lane matchup or like they want to set up this dragon. If Katsuri completes his base, like, yeah, I assume they're going to like constantly swap and keep trying to avoid like leaving TF versus Cassante in a 1v1 because like the item gap is a bit crazy right now. He's just going to like constantly beat these turrets down. If they do decide to like just keep standard lanes, then you know I assume they're just going to set up for objectives and hopefully Maypan does find an angle to like TP into a fight and like just get out of this like 1v1, which is just not good for him right now. It is a bit of a brutal 1v1. Kraken Slayer, Zeal, Boots of Swiftness, and then you've got what, double combat summoners in the Flash Ghost. Uh, we saw what he did before in the 1v2. It's um, it's basically a sign to Mochi, don't ever come to my lane again. Stick elsewhere, which just offers so much landscape, so much real estate then for the TF to outplay. Out goes the Weaver's Wall, a TP right on that wall, allows them to try and say, let's force this fight, but it's a split one for the meantime. Guapi goes in, but there's Guapi that dies. He's the one who's been trying to set up this fight, but he's the one that falls on down. Mayfun across the wall, isolating out the uh, the way from Incursio. He takes the 1v1, actually forcing the phase check and using that fog of war beautifully in his fashion, but it's not enough. 
in the end. His lane opponent is the one to take him down. Yeah, I mean, a bit of an unsung hero there from Asri, <laughs> just, you know, completely just slows him up, okay. Uh, yeah, unsung hero there, Zorius was just zoning three people. We see Guafi go into the 1v3 completely and just blow up, as we see a little bit of chunk going on, but I don't expect anything to happen. We'll get to see it in the replay, but I think, uh, you know, Guafi went a bit too hand there and just found himself. Oh! Dead, like Raze, right now. Well, Raze, he's, uh, he's tried to be cute and clever with it, but Katsuri says, watch this, hits him with the Dials Flare as well. <laughs> and says, uh, look, it is Aphelios at the end of the day. Don't disrespect me, because I can punish you. Yeah, the, so the one saving grace for Dials here was that uh, Raze didn't have ult use in top lane, but Guapi just like goes on an ankle in a 1v3 here. Absolutely no one to keep him alive is he's next to, like, you know, the two diving champs, and... Zoranus is just doing a really good job, like, zoning the rest of the team from following up. Like, Mayfar's just in here by himself, and he, he can't really do anything with the rest of his team. It's just, you know, not there to back him up. It does really feel like Zoranus is, like, that annoying little brother who's just on the side, constantly nagging you, being a, a bit of a menace, just, like, zoning away three people. And it's like, <laughs> oh, wait, there's a team fight taking place. We need to group up. And I say that, and uh, unfortunately, Mayfar, having flipped the lane state, meets Zoranus, who TPs on his head and says, yoink, I'll take that too. And Kyosu actually the one to pick it up to make him uh, make himself have two kills. But I think it's getting close to that point where it becomes a little bit too much to overcome. Rapid fire getting done for the Twisted Fate now. Mochi now it's surrounded by four. The wave is crashing, and this Lee Sin is a sitting duck. And there he goes. A cute little interaction there, and Cursor dodges the tower shot with the <laughs> Rift Herald. Yep, Honestly, back. it's it's rare, you know, you don't really see carries dri driving the Rift Herald because, you know, I think we saw it once, we saw Faker like go onto a turret and throw a game, but <laughs> it's it's nice, it's nice to see the tanks do it. I feel like carries should really avoid hopping into the Rift Herald, I've seen some terrible things happen. So what you're saying is, Incursio and Faker have both taken the Rift Herald, they're basically the same person. True. True. I mean, he's having a flawless uh, way game so far. True. The O's Faker. Well, let's see then if they can try and uh, answer back at least with some kills, some tangible kills. That's what we're really after, right? 17 minutes into this one, they're down by 8,000 gold, which funnily enough is the amount of kills that Antic are up by. And if you look at the overall goal, where it's all uh, actually you know, handed out, it is still Katsuri versus the, but it feels like a bit of a broken narrative where we go from split one to two, the players change, the style is still the same. He admitted it himself in his pre-game interview. But Zoranus is just doing Twisted Fate things, and he's in a league of his own. Yeah, Zoranus has just like had access to so many plates. Like playing, playing TF against the melee champ, and not getting like ganked consistently. You're just gonna find so much gold from like your, your individual matchup. He was also like he's had a really good, uh, good showing with these ult. Like he's found two kills like roaming around the map, which is like really nice to see from a top laner. Let's see what Diwalk can then do to try and answer back into this one. They did find themselves that very first dragon. They tried to contest other objectives, but always being bullied off it, either by their ability to be behind or just overextend their attempt to try and force the fight in their favor. So they can't afford to give too many opportunities away to a team like Antic, especially with the amount of uh, veterans on that roster, that amount of experience to know what to do with a lead like such. But Mayfarn is going to finally be left to his own and uh, be allowed to actually push in away for once. And as soon as he spots TF, he's he's out of there. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm I'm really I'm really afraid for Diwals when Antic are able to group and like Diwals can't really punish because their side laners are so weak. As we do to see the trade happen again, I feel like this is going to be the story of the game. Varasalt trade, Varasalt flash. You know, not so much like uh, like kills coming through. But I, I think Diwals really need to lock down on denying Antic from grouping. Like they need to keep these sides pushed out as much as possible while not you know getting picked by the Vi by the Rakan. Because the moment Antic is able to group, like, they can't deal with that Siege. It's just way too much damage, way too much CC. Yeah, too much Siege, too much range, and too much inability to try and find the angles, especially when you're down to have the vision, the uh, flanking opportunities, uh, even the TP angles, right, to try and make sure that you can isolate out the key target that you're after. But we have seen just how strong Katsuri is, and we've also seen just how strong Zonis is, because he's just run at you with the gold card, with the ghost, coming at you at Mach 10 speed, and says, Katsuri, you are the focus, you will be falling down. And there's a bit of caster curse also there, Tally, because you say one thing, the other thing happens. Triple kill now for Zonis, and, uh, well, that's a Baron on spawn. Yeah, my bad, guys. Yeah, so that's just like the, the tried and true, like, case in League. Like, if you show on sides, your, your mid lane's gonna get engaged on. That's just what they did. Like, they pulled the trigger, committed to every flash, committed to, like, the... Not even the TFL, like, he was just already there. He's just running in with Ghost, and it's really hard to deal with, like, a rapid-fire cannon gold card TF running at your carry. 
It's, it's terrifying. I mean, you watch that replay back, whether or not we get it, we'll see it here. Look at him. He just literally runs it down mid, but in a good way. Yeah, like, it's just, it's really hard to deal with such a fast TF and such long engage, and then we just see the flashes come through. Katsuri's like, I've got nothing left, guys, like, I'll do as much as I can, but I can't really do anything. And, like, the TF is just putting out so much damage here alongside the rest of these teams. You can cleanse, you can heal, you can get everything under the sun, but it just wasn't enough to try and stop the steam train, which is Antic, coming at you as a five-man squad, which was, to be fair, your concern, and now we've seen uh, the real outcome of that, right? So whether or not uh, Die Wolves do get given a chance to stay split in those side lanes is a, another question entirely. Three items, three and a half to be fair now for the Twisted Fate. They've just picked up the Baron. The Dragon, forget about it. A distant afterthought. They've got five Void Grubs. It's not only do they have the range advantage, but they have so much sieging potential, even with that taken into consideration. Yeah, I expect to see Antic play on like multiple lanes and like try get as much out of this Baron as possible. I don't really see them like five manning. I think it'll be like a four one, ideally with TF on side. And this is probably Dial's like one window to find a pick either on the four as like the numbers advantage or to kill Zoranus when he doesn't have Ghost. And Katsuri does have the uh, flash up and available, so that is at least one positive to talk about here. But he's the only one farming this way, but he knows that something doesn't smell quite right. He's going to push up a little bit based on the fact that Mochi has cut off one side of the angle. But as we can see from the God Vision, Antic are just lurking in the shadows, highly pushed up, just waiting, daring anybody to face check as they begin the Baron Siege. Yeah, and this is the hard part for Dials. Like when Antic are able to set up like this, like the, the damage that just is coming out of it. Pretty much the sky, you know, you got to watch out for everything right now. Yeah, you've got to uh, have a flash with no cooldown to dodge everything coming at you because top lane, uh, it's been battered, it's gone. It's been completely removed from the equation and they're going to turn their attention onto mid lane. So the 4-1 you highlight is working out beautifully. They leave Twisted Fate to his own, who is so, so strong that it would need more than two people to try and stop him. But if they are commanding that much attention towards mid, top lane falls down even easier. It's uh, that bit of a catch-22 as they'll try and do what they can in this mid lane, but it feels like it's uh, an inevitable fate for it to fall down as well. Yeah, I do, like, you might assume, like, Antic is uh, overstaying their stay a bit, but I assume they're going to throw ults and try, like, see as much as, get as much as they can before they want to base, see if anything happens. You know, like, we see the Barisol go out, but, like, not too much is going to happen there. But to be fair, Katsuri, honestly, put in, a, once again, a really good effort. Targeted ultimate on towards Rays, and then Mochi patiently waiting on the side there, seeing what he can find. Zoranus is the focus. Zoranus eventually will fall on down, and it's Katsuri that picks up that shutdown bounty. Most importantly, Guapi goes in with a TP, instantly gets locked down by Fona, saying, where are you going? What is that flank? And for all the credit that I was had, it kind of just comes unstuck. Yeah, this, this seems to be the story of the game. I keep seeing Guapi like, play these flanks and just getting absolutely destroyed by either like Foreign or Azornus, like isolated from the rest of these teams. They're not really like playing around the uh, the Aphilios, like in a front-to-back manner. Like, this is honestly like a really, really good pick from uh, Mochi. Like, really nice kick. Unfortunately, the damage didn't come out straight away, and like Zornus was able to get like a lot of damage off onto Katsuri, which forced him to flash out of the fight. And, you know, like Guapi's just like by himself in the back line. <laughs> and like, you're not going to be the fight at this point. And they aren't far too strong, far too ramped up, and uh, far too protected from the rest of the team swarming around that one flanking TP, which they've spotted dead center in the middle of that lane. Well, I suppose uh, 24 minutes into this one, then 13 kills to two, up by 12,000 gold. I, I think tonight's uh, you know scheduled the series really were going to be two lopsided affairs, given the sort of disparity, some of the unknown quantities around these rosters, but also just the sort of pedigree that. These two teams were the finalists, and uh, you're expecting them to come out the gate swinging. Yeah, it's also like the nice thing about best of series because like coming into a new split, you can make assumptions about like your opponents, like what they prioritize, like how they're gonna play, but you don't really know until you play them on the day. And like they, I feel like Antic have shown like a lot of their hands here, and like Daiwos can like go back to the drawing board for the next game and maybe change, maybe play the same, maybe they assume that like it was just a misplay on their part as we are getting picked here. You certainly are. I like how you talked uh, for a little bit, because it does take a fair bit of time to try and take the Cassante down, but eventually he does fall, so Frodo will pick that up for his third of the game, and Zorinus says, okay, you've listened to me, you said that we need more than two people, so we'll give you three! And I tell you what, Katsuri is the one that says, come on team, I'm the only one with kills on this did. game, rally behind me and let's try and win this game. He's got the life still, he's got the ability to try and force the foreigner back, and the snipe across the wall will not be for him. It will be taken by Mochi as we continue to find around in the jungle. Raised with a nice flash to slide step onto Gatsuri. Receives the shield, but it's just not enough. 
and Katsuri says, come on boys, we're down this much gold, but we're still fighting back. Like, oh dear. The damage coming out of Katsuri right now is insane. Like we completely slept on it, but he just picked up IE like out of nowhere as the double burn does come through. Like there's the new items going to work. But yeah, Katsuri's picked up his infinity edge and his damage is a bit unmatched right now. And like Antique was having such a like unconstructed fight. Katsuri's just finding like 1v1s consistently and like that's where Aphilius will shine. Hey, what? Well, he's got a uh, fairly hefty weight on his shoulders, but if he's given the resources, he's putting it to good work. Up by a fair amount of CS, now up by a whole host of kills. And I guess that's always the interesting discussion point, right? What scales better? And at this stage, you're thinking, Aphelios may have the tools to try and 1v9. Yeah, I mean, even looking at his gun combo, like, no one wants to be green-red in this situation, but he's still just outputting an insane amount of damage. Like, honestly, unsung hero here is Shinky. Like, he's a... Uh... His uh, Q's coming out of melee, like stopping the engage was really, really good. Like they were unable to find Katsuri. He's playing with, you know, so much freedom in these fights, like finding these like 1v1s against people who just are a bit too squishy at this point. Yeah, I mean, as you say, it's already two different styles of play, bit the front to back versus the poke. And uh, if you have done enough poke damage, surprise, surprise, that front to back team just gets to delete you right in your face. No matter the flash tech from uh, Raze there, it wasn't enough to try and deny the kill. Back to the second then, respawning of the Baron. That one denied away from Diables before. But this definitely puts a bit of a spanner on the works, doesn't it? To beat down, what, 12,000 gold before that team fight, but then to come out ahead? All those bounties claimed, and now you're thinking, don't tell me this game goes late. See if Zoranus is able to ult out in time. Ooh. That was close, that was extremely close. But yeah, like, looking at the gold lead, like, you see this huge 12,000 gold lead, but it's honestly a bit closer than that, like, if... Katsuri finds the damage, he can one-shot pretty much every champion on that team. Like, no one is tanky against these items he has right now. Nice knockback there from Shinki once again, forcing the attempts of Dragon to try and find the charm with that quickness. The Baron down to 50%. I feel like Antic are looking for the turn, they're baiting, but they are going to be losing HP on their jungler. Their main engage from that Vi. Just out of range of that piercing arrow as uh, Zorinus filters off from that bot lane attempt into the mid. I want to continue to go for this 1-4 uh, split, but Zoranus does realize that he is human after all, despite having the most items in this game, he can bleed. And they're not going to really want to throw anything, knowing that Dire Wolves are strong enough to try and catch it. Yeah, you just see Zoranus just being a pest, like constantly going to the side, even though he doesn't have access to that TP, like he, he doesn't mind, like he really just wants to, you know, force someone to come onto him, because in the 1v1 he's completely fine. He forces two people to come to him, then like the rest of his team can play for the Baron, and it's very easy to secure when you're in that uh, numbers advantage situation. Now basically do that, that little vision dance around the Baron Pit, don't we? You replace the ward, you go back to base, get the inventory restocked again, come back again, play, uh, plant it down and say, are we still doing this, guys? Are we still dancing with this Baron? Let's just fight. Ultimately, Dire Wars do go and replace everything that was just denied. And now they play clean out crew. So that is, uh, that is the late game shenanigans. I suppose the frustration based on the fact that if they don't pay too much attention to this Baron, Zoranus will just single-handedly win the game by split pushing. Yeah, a much more methodical game. We're seeing like just like the turn base League of Legends happening. Like you clear my wards, I clear your wards. Like you recall, I recall. But like, like once again, you see the gold lead. Just, it keeps ballooning because uh, Zoranus, Antic are getting access to the entire map. Like you see them answering waves in front of the enemy base. They're stealing jungle camps. It's not just like uh, ward clearing, you know, turn base. There's a lot more gold going to the Antic pockets just from all the farm and camps they're taking right now. Yeah, as you say, the map really does belong to them. They've got seven towers to two, so uh, the map is so freely open for them to roam around and find and really deny as they please. And um, yeah, it really is up for Diwas to try and find that killer moment to say we are strong enough to try and contest, because as it stands, Katsuri has four items complete. He's got the Lord Doms. So anybody, even if they are quite squishy, is going to be absolutely eviscerated. If he's got the flash, if he's got Shinky there to pocket him in the back line as well, I mean, there's a real chance that he can just continue to go crazy. Do have a sneaky ward here, so you know, as I do have an engage onto May Farm. Looking for it, May Farm is the focus, goes all out after buffering all that CC. They turn around onto Drago instead. Now who's... The blue gun. Unfortunately, gonna fall on down. There is the blue gun, there is the Moonlight Vigil, there is the damage make it a double kill, looking for the triple. Going golden in Zoranus as he comes out of that one. There is the triple, Rob. Get it done for the team, put them on your back and carry to the skyline and beyond as they're going to look to try and run down Raze now who's already burnt double summoners the wall blocks his retreat 
and they spoon feed the quadruple kill and say there's only one more in our sights. We're down 13,000 gold. How is this happening? Yeah, it's it's honestly like Katsuri knows his limits there. As you can see in the fight, like he just flashes forward with blue gun and he just starts blasting. Like being in that choke, being all final together, like the AoE damage he was putting out is quite insane as insane as we will see in the replay. Like we do engage onto Mayfan here as like antic, but it's not really like ideal. We're losing like way too many cooldowns when he can just get out like that. Like as you look at Katsuri in this fight, like he's just hitting with the blue gun and he's just flashing forward, like he's really confident. Even though like this the like the gold lead is so big right now. It's honestly, uh, honestly really well played to him. I think Incursio did a good job like trying to clean up on the end here, but unfortunately like the carries from Anti-Click split up is just getting picked up by Talia Flick. Yeah, they certainly do. They certainly do, Tally, and this really does become a bit of a head-scratcher because you'd say if you were to tune into this game right now, oh, okay, Antigo absolutely smashing this one, but uh, I imagine the gold graph, once we get to the end of this game, is going to be so up and down and up and down all over the show because Katsuri, very early on to the game, was the only red member in that top five discussion. Now, he is single-handedly at the top, and his closest teammate is down 7,000 gold. <laughs> Yeah, you would think like this This should be a much easier game for Anti. Like basically, when you look at the gold, it's quite insane that this is a close game. I think that like, it's it's part of like Katsuri's playing really well, but it's also that there's not much threat onto his champion. Like it's just Vi. And we're at the point in the game where like poke doesn't really matter because like he has sustain from the milieu. I assume he's running Bloodline as well. So he has like a bit of life still in his kit. Like he has the Guardian Angel now. So even if he messes up, he's got that extra life. It's like, if you're an Antic fan, it's a bit scary being in this game state, but like they're not out of it for sure. Like their champs still scale really, really well. Like I think that Hoi is like kind of unmatched in his like late game team fights if he gets access to the death cap. Yeah, certainly is a, uh, is an anxiety inducing moment for the Antic fans out there thinking, how come we haven't won this game when we've been up by such a sizable amount? But Die Wolves for the first time this time say, well, we can actually answer back what the objective started up on our own terms that we can claim and we can now use to good success. Two towers become four. The gold lead once again shrinking to a little bit more of a tangible number. But then they say, at all out it cost, kill this Aphilios. He's got the Guardian Angel, and first and foremost, that's no what flash. they pop. He's got no flash, he doesn't have barrier, he has a support. And is that enough? The shielding, the healing, but look at Zoranus! Look at Zoranus, he's a Gatling gun on the flank. And they said, you will die at all costs. And the they, gold guard will be denied by the Banshees. They need to end the game here. This is their one window to win the game. If they don't win here, Katsuri next fight, he's going to have Flash. He's going to have access to a lot more utility to be able to survive that. They use so many cooldowns to be able to blow him up there. And if they're unable to end the game here, I would be pretty comfortable with saying Dials is going to take it from here. Another game where you've got all the Void Grubs to really assist in that true damage to try and shred these structures down. There is the Zonias. Dying time, making sure that this wave can maybe survive just a Zornis. fraction longer. Zornis is going to die to the tower. Too greedy for the kill. And honestly, Tally, that stopped their ability to end the game. Ooh. Ooh, that is scary. That is very scary indeed. Antique are going to have to play these next fights really well. Dracu does have access to the flash and Foreigner does have his tool, so that was actually my mistake. They didn't blow that much getting onto him. But yeah, these are what the fights are going to look like for now. And like the flanks, every bit of CC going down. Like, even though he's hitting everything on him, you see that Katsuri does come out of the GA here and gets so much damage off towards the end. But Zoranus, you know, he still is going to output that damage if he's, if he's left untouched like this. He certainly is, but he's left untouched and uh, as much damage as, uh, you know, Ephelios can do when left at her own device. Same could be said of this Twisted Fate. We're going to be up in about uh, 20 seconds. He's already full build, 33 minutes into this one. We're certainly scaling our way towards that late game fiesta where it is Antic hunting for the Chemtech soul, but it is Die Wars looking to deploy first and deny with that numbers advantage. Yeah, I, I assume Antic is probably going to play to get this year. They're not really in position. Cute little steal attempt from Raze, but you know, it doesn't work every time. I will shout out the book by from Incursio. Respect. Book enjoyer. Many pages. The, ch the Magi Church. <laughs> he is looking to write a few more chapters in this game. Having got 10 pages already secured, don't forget that magical 25 and showcase that I am more than just an uh, assassin player. I know he's got a lot of fans watching right now in Twitch chat thinking, wait, Incursio, back in pro play? That's my streamer. But certainly, 7, 1, and 9, it's, uh, it's a pretty standout performance from him, given this is his first time showcasing a, a different style of play in a competitive landscape. Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a really good showing from Curcio because a lot of people would assume that he would be like the weak leak of the team. You know, like he, he's like a, he's a one trick. How's he going to play in like a, such a mage-dominated meta? But I think he's having a really, really good showing on probably one of the hardest champs in the game right now. So like, shout out to Incursio for playing so well so far. 
So far, so good. May not be the same fate though for Mayfun as he's been isolated out in the side lanes. Isn't actually going to stun out that uh, gold card, uses it now, and is he actually going to get out for free? The campfire, it's nice, it's cozy. Gets a warm cup of cocoa, and he's A-OK. -okay. The line, the wall, blocks out Zoranis, who does have a Guardian Angel of his own. Doesn't have the flash though, waits for that one to expire, and looks to try and kite his way to victory. Out goes Squappy again with a Zonia status. Katsuri in the back line with the red and the green sniping, life stealing, and doing criminal amounts of damage, but this time it wasn't enough to try and 1v9. Yeah, that's the that's the prowess of the Hui. Like when you're diving into him and he gets the, the QE out, like the mini rumble ult, like the damage he's outputting there is insane, and that's just a Honestly, well played to Antic, like, he still had all their summoners up. I thought that like Draku blowing his Rakan ult onto the front line there would seal the fight for Katsuri, but I haven't seen they're able to end here. Looking to end, looking to get it done, looking to say this game should have been over about 10 minutes ago. One turret falls, a second soon to follow. Katsuri against the world, down to 20%. He can't sustain for much more. Proxa shield, frontline tanks it. X in really the only fashion he could do, send it, or this game would end. But Antic at 36 